hey what's up guys welcome back to our youtube channel and welcome to this video so this is the part 14 of our laravel for beginners tutorial and in this video we're going to discuss about user authentication but as a sort of review in the previous tutorials we have worked with our uh, create read update delete um, functionality for our project so as i've said in this video we're going to discuss user authentication so as you can see we have here the login register functions and if you try to go to our database we can see we have already created or populated our users table with the uh, attributes id name email uh, email verified password token and the created at and updated fields or attributes so let's go back to our code editor and try to add more features to our project and add the user authentication and perhaps the uh, user access control to our project so let's go back to our code editor and let's try to see uh, the views in the views we have already this file right so as you can see we have different options and different menus the home services blog the about and of course we have added the login and register links so that we will be able to log in and of course we will be able to register to our project and for now let's just copy this because we're going to um override this file so let's do that by creating a new file as a sort of backup and let's try to open up our command line so that we'll be able to create the authentication or user authentication for our project. So in here let's just um, type in php artisan and then make colon and then the keyword oath and then let's just try to wait for a few seconds to enable the uh, so as you can see we have here a problem command make oath is not defined so I think we have oh so instead of using the artisan make oath so I think we need to run the command php artisan instead and then UI and then oath so this will enable the authentication or user authentication for our project and we have here a prompt that says the oath login that laid that PHP view already exists do you want to replace it so for now let's just say yes because we want them to be replaced with a new version of the login that PHP the Play that page p email that page p and then i'm just gonna answer yes to this um prompt verify so this will again override our old files so authentication scaffolding generated successfully so if you try to run our project right now let's say refresh Okay, so as you can see, we have already um, overwrite or overridden our our old files, and as you can see, we don't have any uh, additional options here for our blog services and adding the post. So we need to add that in our app that played that PHP file. So as you can see, we have the backup for our app that played that PHP file. And we have here the new one. Okay. So all we have to do is just, we can just copy the, so for example, the link from here. So starting from here to the, the first navigation item for our home. And then paste it here. Here you go. And of course, we need to add also the navigation for adding a post. So, ul 
left side of our navigation. Okay. So we have here the option to add post. And of course, guys, we can make the navigation bar uh, instead of light. We can say inverse. Just gonna remove this. So navigation bar inverse and then save this one. And let's go back to our browser and then refresh. So as you can see, we have added all the options to add post. We also have the home services blog about and of course the login and register pages. And as you can see, we need to fix this display right here because I think it's not uh, indented. So let's go back to our code editor and try to modify that. So index for our content. So we don't have here the div container. So we need to add that in our app.play.php file. Okay. So we have here the content, uh, yielding of content, but we need to add the container class or container div with a class Con, uh, container okay so this should solve the problem of the indention or the margin left for our project refresh so as you can see now the content is indented and if we try to go to register we can already uh, we can already register here by using our name so for example um, Tom saw and an email let's just say Tom at gmail.com and then password okay and then register and as you can see we have uh, redirected into our home and uh, prompted that we are now logged in. So as you can see, we have um, enabled the user authentication and the Laravel takes care of all the intricacies of using the user authentication within our project. Okay, now so we can close this and let's try to edit our home.play.php. So instead of just showing you are now logged in let's just say we can add a post here so that will be post and then cre yeah create and create post and then we're just going to add a class for our button or link btn btn primary and let's just say here your log post then save this try to uh, preview and then refresh so we have here the updated dashboard or home page then we can just create a post but if we try to look up in our database post so post because we want to add the id of the user that has posted the certain post so we need to make a migration for that to add the attribute ID of our user so now let's add the migration for adding our user ID into our uh, database table so in here we need to run the command php make php artisan and then make and then migration and then the name of our migration is add user ID to post. Okay. So PHP artisan make colon and then migration add user ID to post. And it says it created the migration. So if we try to go back to our file and then 
under database and then migrations we now have the migration add user id to post okay so if you try to run our migration right now that uh nothing will happen because we don't have any logic inside the up and the down function so in order for us to add the id to the user table in our database we need to have some logic here and also run the migration so inside here we need to say table and then integer because the value of the user id is of integer type so user and then underscore id and then um semicolon and of course whenever we want to roll back the changes that we made in our migrations we can just say table and then drop column and then specifying the column user id so okay so after that one uh, save this and then let's just say php artisan um, migrate so migrating user id post and it says migrated so let's check our php my admin so inside here in our database we can see we have already the user underscore id and for now let's just say um it belongs to user one this particular post and also this one it belongs to the user one so it just uh it belongs to someone okay so now let's try to um edit the controller for our post because whenever we need uh, whenever we add a certain post we want the user id or grab the user id and add that along with the other information of the post so let's just go to http and then controllers and then post controllers okay so post so inside our store function we just need to have the user id or pass in the user id so here post and then user id equals and this time we're not gonna use the request because the user id doesn't come from the user uh, or i mean doesn't come from request it comes from the user oath so it should say oath and then user and then we're just going to have or grab the id okay and then save so here refresh and post and then certain title of a post new body of a post and then submit so we have now the certain title of a post and if we try to check the third post we can see that the user id has been populated by value of one which means that this particular post belongs to the user uh, with the id one so i think that's all there is to it for this tutorial and then in the next video we're going to discuss about uh, access control for our post so see you in the next video thanks